Well, I mean, I just put this on for for your film, but I'm probably not going to wear this forever. <laughs> what is that supposed to be? The Hulk thing going it's on. It's from Goosebumps. Remember Goosebumps? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah, yeah, Goosebumps. Yeah. yeah, I used to buy them and feel the uh, titles because they were bumpy. Right. Alicia, we're yeah. relying on you to get us through this so we don't Questions? suffocate. The first icebreaker question is... What is your most used emoji? Mm. Mm. I would say the eyeballs. What? Oh my god. <laughs> I would say it would be um, the eyeball emoji. The two eyeballs. Oh, oh, I thought you said eye holes. Yeah, that's why the mask is very tell. short-lived. It's coming off. Uh, I'd say mine is probably uh, doo-doo emoji. <laughs> probably the doo-doo emoji. Um, second question is, what would your superpower be and why? Wow, that's a deep question. Um, <laughs> I would want to be Mystique from X-Men uh, because she can turn into basically anything she wants to. So I don't have to pick just okay. Superman or just Spider-Man. I can do all of them. So yeah, Mystique. Wait, does she get the powers too? She gets everything. Me? I'd probably choose Flight. Yeah, solid. Solid. I'd want to solid skill. Alright, I'm taking this off. <laughs> Sucks. Welcome to another exciting episode of Short Film Sensei. In this episode, we talk to scriptwriter and editor Josh Hughes about his film Domesticated Animals. Link is in the description below. In this episode, we learn how being a script supervisor and an editor together can be a killer combo, how to work around delays for various film productions and also how weird characters in your story can equal fun scenarios for the overall film. Let's get on the map. Uh, that was the speed round. Usually what I like to do too is go through, um, you know, five minutes or so of basic interview questions. Okay. <laughs> well, Josh, he just walked away. <laughs> yeah, I've had enough already. Show, yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> get your shit together. This is the horse mask, huh? I'm sorry. I uh, apologize. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just getting comfortable. I like to have my door closed. If you could uh, introduce yourself slightly and, you know, give a general idea of what you do in the industry. Yeah. My name is Josh Hughes. I am a 2011 graduate of UW Oshkosh, where I went to the uh, radio, TV, and film program. Um, I've kind of been bopping around the country ever since. Uh, I had some really, really fun jobs outside of college and I um, got into news and broadcasting the past eight years has been marketing. Um, and I'd say the last five years has been a heavy focus on uh, writing and editing. Very nice. And um, you prefer like script writing, right? That's your main focus that you would like to do? Or has that changed? Yeah. I, I mean, I've been doing some copywriting and some, some things on uh, side projects for friends. But yeah, um, you know, it's not even just writing, it's development. I really enjoy getting feedback and um, breaking story and helping people solve issues that they might be having or helping get stories better. So it's, um, it's really the whole pre-production phase of making something out of nothing, essentially. Yeah, I enjoy that a lot, too. I like formulating. Well, you know this because we've worked together a right. lot on ideas and right. formulating ideas and coming up with stories. Definitely. I mean, you wrote the script for The Fisherman, and we're developing that movie and that should be starting production in next year yeah but i'm excited about that i think that story is really good yeah it's different um, but it's, it's yeah. familiar in, in the yeah. same sense and and reading all of your scripts i mean a lot of those ideas are really unique um and interesting yeah you know you gotta be yeah i always say you gotta be weird and interesting and different if you want to get noticed how many years would you say that you've been writing scripts after graduation i was living alone for about eight months uh, in an apartment by myself. So basically I'd go to work, I'd come home, eat dinner, and then I would just write for a couple hours. So it, it just kind of got me into the habit of what it takes to um, write consistently and mm -hmm. develop some sort of uh, procedure um, or, you know, see what works best for my, my personal style. So um, yeah, I did that for a few years. And then I, you know, I, I think I just kind of gave up because I was like a, this isn't for me. Um, but then it slowly worked its way back into my life. And then about five years ago, I said, I'm going hmm. to give it five hard years of dedication. 
and I want something yeah. big to happen in those five years. Otherwise, you know, maybe it's time to yeah. focus on something else. With this film, um, Domesticated Animals, yeah. you wrote the script for this, right? Like that was you? Yes. Yep. So 100%? Yeah, okay. that was me. Really, it was one of those ideas that I always say the most interesting ones come to you when you're like in between sleeping and awaking. And this mm-hmm. one just like on a Saturday morning popped into my head. And I remember just running to my computer to write down everything that I was thinking. And it really kind of expanded mm-hmm. from the initial idea. But that first little kind of like thought was was really different. And the, the characters came to me almost instantly. And it was just one of those things where you can't explain where the idea came from because it just literally almost like flew into your head. Yeah, yeah. I guess like I have trouble coming up with dreams and stuff or remembering dreams. Right. Like I'm sure we all dream. But I have an issue where I wake up and it's totally gone. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I I, you know. I always thought that how I dreamt was uh, how everybody did. But explaining it to mm-hmm. my wife and a few other people, like, I, I think I'm a bizarre dreamer because I'll have dreams where I know I had the same one when I was a kid. So mm-hmm. 20 years ago, I'm having the same thing. And um i'll Hmm. have dreams where i know i've had that dream before and i'll be like oh yeah i I know where i am i know the house next door and i know the building down the road and i can explore the world almost as if it's real it's very it's very different and and unique but Hmm. i remember dreams all the time that's very cool that's where i get a lot of my story ideas from well i mean that explains a lot of your story ideas (laughs) right how they turn out right because it's almost like a dream state you know just the choices that the characters make and stuff it's a lot different than reality in a lot of cases right you know, right and which a lot makes of, it which makes it good a lot of people you know? try to say like you know realistically a character wouldn't make this decision but i'm like at the end of the day this isn't real life you know this is a, a movie and this is something you're watching and well people people try to make things as realistic as possible it's like well it, you're still editing and directing and acting right so it's it's fake for the uh, vintage vintage footage how did you guys uh, decide to use this? Yeah, the um, okay. intro, you know, I was like, I was struggling with what to do and I didn't want something traditional. I wanted to instantly let you know that this was like, what, what, what is going on, you know? And so I had yeah. this idea of just flashing a bunch of photos of like the traditional nuclear family, you know? And yeah. just have them getting weirder and weirder as we go on. And, um, this, this movie is about kind of breaking the barrier of what a traditional household should be. That's actually my anniversary date. Little uh, Oh, Easter is it egg. really? Yeah. <laughs> nice. And is that um, like digitally added on there? Yeah. So or is that? Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, you can't really tell, can you? No, it looks like it's built into the lock, right? Or it, yeah. it, that's the type of lock it is. It's kind of, but it's odd because locks don't have time on them usually. So it's right. Um, yeah, that that one does. Minute. That that specific lock that we purchased did have a, a clock on it. So okay. it's meant to lock things for a certain amount of time. Um, oh, that's weird. Yeah. That's so weird. we just put it in post because it was way easier to to do that. You can't tell at all, especially with the color grade. No. You can't even tell. Yeah, it blends in very well. Yeah. So this shot right here, did you guys have like a suction cup on the car with a GoPro or this? How did you guys get was, this? His name's Tony Porter. He was a what do they call him? Grip. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He he rigged up the entire yeah. back of the car. So this is like a Prius, and there's these mm-hmm. two bars coming out from each side that are suction cup to the sides of the car. Okay. So we were driving around this is the neighborhood that i live in and we were driving around on a saturday morning it was like 10 degrees out with this huge contraption and a uh, <laughs> i think it was a komodo the the, the red oh. komodo 6k and yeah. when my wife sent me a photo because they rigged up this up in our driveway she's like i told you to be discreet about this and you've got this Prius <laughs> with this huge like back to the future contraption on the back uh and we got well, some funny I mean, looks but you know, people probably thought you were like Google Maps or something. Right. You know, yeah. It kind of driving. looks like that car. Yeah. And this is this was just a suction cup on the the hood of the car at the actresses. Oh, okay. With the same camera. 
the uh, Komodo? Yep, it was all shot on the same camera, yeah. Okay. Did you shoot this before you rigged up the back? So we did the back. That. We the, yeah. On that Saturday morning, we did the first half of the day was um, all the car shots. So it was this setup, the back, and then we did a setup that I never used in the short where it was the camera was focused on the, the right actress uh, with a lot of looking room to her, her right. And the mm-hmm. same with the actress on the left. Um, but the, the, the windshield was too dirty. It just didn't look good at all. Uh, so we had to scrap that shot. But it was a good example uh, of, yeah, we spent two hours rigging and shooting, but it just didn't yeah. look good. Damn. So these two actresses, uh, are they Milwaukee-based? Or did you recruit them from, like, Chicago? or? So this is Madison. Um, she is from New York, actually. She's an actress out of New York that came highly recommended Mm -hmm. by one of the producers. Um, Mm -hmm. we can kind of get into it later, but her airplane was delayed because of a snowstorm. So (laughs) she missed the entire first day of filming. Um, and then, uh, Paige Bourne is from Milwaukee. I think she's actually in Chicago now, but she's a big name in the area. Okay. And Paige is the driver, right? Yeah. She's been a lot of local things very uh professional very fun to work with yeah i've seen her before uh in a couple of films like i worked with her on a project once before as well with all the cast members it was like they connected with some of the story points so they you know it's a weird story but they they all connected with some aspect of it we need to have a kid. so how long did it take you to shoot the car sequence overall would you say so i do like have to give you up a, a quick shout out for um Cameron was responsible for finding the owner of this house and getting us to shoot there. <laughs> oh, oh, this house right yeah, here. That was the house that you, uh, I was like, Hey, if you owe me one for editing your two <laughs> short films, contact the yeah. owner. Um, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to work out, but it actually did. I didn't think it was going to work either, but I wanted yeah. that house, um, uh, because it heavily influenced the story and yeah. it all worked out. I mean, it does stand out like this house stands out. Oh over yeah, definitely. The other houses, you know what I mean? Like, Right. Just the, uh, the, it just looks older than the other places. Right. And it is, it's significantly older. This guy was a good choice for this role. <clears throat> He's like the right so, amount of creepy um, for it. Joe was the only, no, not the only, he was the third actor to audition for the role. And the second mm-hmm. I saw him, I was like, that's it. He's the character. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah, because like, he just he blew everybody away on set with just how appropriately creepy he was, and just yeah, just yeah. like bizarre. He added to the entire story. You know, he did a great yeah. job with the role. Yeah, well, he definitely um, adds like some kind of right, right. Uh, he, it just doesn't feel real. You know what I mean? Like interacting with him, he feels like he's fake, or right, something's right. going he, on. Yeah, you know? he feels fake. Yeah. I can safely say, buying a house. Every other house is sold in a day. What's wrong with this one? Here's that um, prop right here. Yeah. It's famous. <laughs> so what? What's the purpose of the timer? Like, what, what's the idea behind that? So the idea of that is uh, literally like a, a ticking time bomb. Um, you know, when I was, it was a feeling that I had when we were looking at our first house was that I literally mm-hmm. felt like we were uh, on a timer. Like when we were being shown homes, it was like, okay, well, there's another showing in a half hour and an hour after that, like mm-hmm. you literally have 40 minutes to decide, are you going to buy this place? And so I really wanted to make it a little more uh, obscure. And I said, okay, now with this world, you literally have five minutes to tour and decide if you want to buy this house or not. So which it's is very, you know, um, extreme, but that's the yeah. world they live in. Everything is to the very far extreme. So everything's like regimented. It has right. to be followed this way. Right. You know, and it's, it's really like the, the rules that we all kind of feel that we're pressured into when we get married and buy a house and have kids. It's like, you know, everyone kind of asks in these increments of a, a year or two, like, are you doing this and doing this? And, you yeah. know, you really should have kids and everything like that. And with this world, it's making it the law. You know, you, you have to get married within two years of dating and then you have to have a kid one year after being married. And then 
you have to buy a house and then you have to have a pet. It's all these just really like strict rules um, that we, we kind of feel like we're obligated to, to stick to as, you know, in our world. So hypothetically, what if the animal here isn't here anymore? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is here. And if it isn't, that would be a rule break. So, you know, what's interesting about this, is your this scene is that it was shot on two different days because okay. the one actress on the left, again, she her flight was delayed, so she missed the Friday that we were filming. So we just got mm -hmm. really creative and did what we could. So we, we filmed this, sh this scene on Saturday and the reverse mm -hmm. on joe we shot on friday oh so interesting right now he's not talking to anybody okay and he's kind of like he's looking into the camera which makes it feel even creepier you right. know like, like he's, he's talking did, to did you guys purposefully do that like have him look into the camera or did he just naturally gravitate to doing that i think he naturally did but you know to be honest i i okay. didn't direct this um we had a separate okay. director on set and I kind of set him up with how I thought things should be, but really he took it the direction he wanted to go, which uh, he had very good instincts. And, uh, you know, we'd worked together so long planning everything that he was in my head, but he also has his own style, which he definitely put onto this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like how he's addressing the audience. I think right. it's really, it adds to it, you know? It's like he's trying to make us purchase the home. Ow. <laughs> Old homes do make lots of noises. So like that's another good example right there. That um the bird could only come on Friday mm. and we didn't have both actresses. So this shot and the next shot are different days. Oh, so this shot is a different. So, like, day. when she pulls that off, yeah, it was match cut to a separate uh, shot. Oh, she wasn't even in the room when that was being recorded. That's awesome. I went, I went to Petco the next day, bought the same exact cage, and nice. we we just you know framed it so you didn't see that there was no bird. That's really cool. Yeah, you can't tell at all. It blends in perfectly. No. And then when we cut to. This? Yeah. That's actually the other actress's hands. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. So that's um, Paige is right there reaching into... That's her bird. behind her, basically. Yep, yep. Her right yeah, here. That, Madison is in the red coat right here, yeah. and Paige is in the blue. Okay. Um, so we, we used Paige for a lot of the close-ups that Madison would have been doing. So how did you get the bird to uh, bite? Uh, that bird was a feisty bitch, um, <laughs> and he did not want to be around people he didn't know. So that bite happened on accident, and I'm like, oh, we're going to use this. It's awesome. Was that Paige's hands, too? Yep, that's Paige. Actually, I think that is Paige, yeah. <laughs> so that was an accident. I didn't know if it was the owner, but Damn. yeah, it's like all an accident, and we just kind of rolled with it. That's cool. The idea is that you buy the house, it comes with that animal. Could you explain that a little more, like why it is the, that way in particular? Um, yeah, it, it, I think the, that was the initial idea. And that's the, I, when I have like this uh, notebook in my desk here where I write down ideas that just pop into my head. Mm -hmm. And the initial idea was what if every house came with an animal or, you know, a pet. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what the the first couple drafts of the script, it was exclusively about pets. And I, I obviously expanded it a bit, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it stemmed from this feeling of people kind of rushing through life stages or like feeling like they always have to have the next thing right now, uh, um, specifically with animals, because I see so many people that, oh, you know, Fluffy died. She was 12 years old. And then a week later they have a puppy and I'm like, isn't there some sort of yeah. grieving period or yeah. a, a duration of time where you feel like you have to heal? It, it, it's like, it's almost like you're being forced into getting another animal because you need that attachment. Um, right. So yeah, I, I think the, the initial kind of rule or law, whatever you want to call it was 
Okay, you buy a house, it comes with a pet, and that becomes kind of like a silly reason why people don't purchase a house, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Like you, you see people that don't want to purchase a house because it's a different color or it needs a little bit of work. Right. So this became kind of like a, a stupid reason why you wouldn't purchase a house. Like, oh, well, that house comes with a cat. I don't like cats. Um, well, that one comes with a bird. The thing's going to live for 60 years. I don't want that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then on the flip side, it would be like, well, the house down the road comes with a puppy. It's cute as hell. I'm going to offer 50 grand more because I want that dog, you know? Right. Yeah. So it just kind of became really, really silly, but like also kind of, you know, interesting way that people are purchasing properties is, is these silly reasons, you know, mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's factual, but you know, it's just making it a bit more obscure so you can see the silliness in it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like you're turning pets into, you know, kitchen tile or a certain type of right. cabinet set. It must have been the wife. Christy would never do that. One month. For the spouse. The ending credits, yeah. The the composer had very strong feelings about connecting the opening uh, punk rock song to the end. Mm -hmm. He wanted kind of like this bookends of like rock music with like this beautiful or orchestra music throughout. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, a lot of the music does feel, you know, I guess to sort of the the naked eye or naked ear a, a bit different, but right. it was the style and approach that we had lots of discussions about. And, and, you know, he was really excited to see how all of it turned out. Yeah. I, I honestly think it fits. Um, right. I, and the, and the, the last song has lyrics that kind of go on with the story. So yeah. Yeah. We had an extra day to film, uh, especially yeah. with the pivot that we had to do. Um, but you know, we were blessed with, with snow on the Friday and we were outside, we needed mm -hmm. snow. Um, and then the snow was gone by Sunday or Monday. So that was really, really good for, you know, free set dressing. Um, yeah, yeah, we did. I don't want to say have to rush, but we, we had to move quickly because part of the stipulation with the investors on this was it has to premiere at a film festival in May and we filmed it the last weekend of February. We got up to the festival in time, made everybody happy. And, you know, it was probably the first uh, bigger budget short that I did um, with a, a very professional crew uh, with people that did a very good job. You know, there was no fighting on set or anything. Um, nice. It was a really good time, too. You know, it was, it was fun just being able to be on set and watch everyone work. Because I, I don't particularly enjoy directing. Um, I'll do it if I have to, but... I just got to clap the board and take detailed notes, which really helped in post because, you know, we said, okay, take two was our favorite. I made a note, you know? So you acted like a, almost like a script supervisor on set and then took that into the editing room. Yeah. That's what I'm doing on the, uh, the short that we're shooting this weekend. It's hmm. I'm, I've, I've been attached to the story, uh, helping, uh, the, the writer make notes and, uh, rewrites and then i'm script supervising on set and then i'm editing so i'll have okay. those same exact notes of which takes we liked and and everything uh going into premiere so that's crazy i think that's the way huh. to do it yeah that's really actually a good idea i didn't even think about that because you're clapping the board you're setting the scenes you're getting the best takes and you're taking all those notes with you into the editing room plus you wrote yeah, the script it, it, too so that makes it super easy to you know right yeah, that made it a bit easier as well. So what what was your budget for this project, if you don't mind me asking? So the budget was um, seven grand. So okay. that included flights and crew. Um, I ended up paying for the composer and the color correction uh, out of pocket because um, the funds just kind of Got wasn't used planned. Up, so yeah, it wasn't planned for that. So I'd say in total, it was probably eight thousand that was spent on it. That's not bad. I mean, well, and how many days was the shoot? It's two or three? Two days. So two. With, with flights, um, with hotels, everyone shared an Airbnb. Um, everyone got paid except for me, <laughs> and yeah, and the director. Um, but all the crew got paid. We all got fed. 
Uh, we all had coffee. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the way to do it. Even if you're not getting much, you're still getting something. And then you, boom, right. you have something you can add to your, um, your credits list. What are your future plans? Do you have uh, more projects? You said you had a short that you're working on right now um, developing. And then we have the fisherman that you wrote the script for coming out. Right. So, um, what else do you have going on? The short, the sizzle thing um, is uh, that's this weekend. That's going to be a three-day shoot um, with some big potential. Uh, that, that's a big budget thing. That's like, what is it, like close to $30,000 they're spending on Oh, that. nice. Nice. Um, okay. The director of domesticated animals. We're, we're co-writers, so um, mm -hmm. he has some connections that are looking for features. So right now we are outlining two features that we're going to present um, the scripts to get funding to make. Essentially, we're kind of going at it with similar ideas with similar themes, um, mm -hmm. but just different stories. Uh, by default because he's more of like a high concept kind of think piece and i'm more about dialogue and character interaction and relationships so mm -hmm. that's kind of what you did for these shorts here right domesticated animals and then he wrote uh i forgot what the name was um the it had like a Sekunda. spiral yeah 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 so you guys kind of did the same thing where you made two shorts as a as a deal for funding i guess and then yeah, that was the, the investors said, you got to make these two shorts and you yep. have five months to do it. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, that, I know that is probably stressful. Like, so you didn't, did you already have this script in mind when you got that deal or did you make this idea? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, you, so we had these yeah. written about six months prior and we were trying to get them funding for them. And then just out of the blue, somebody called and said, Hey, I got 15 grand. You guys got to make two shorts in five months. And, I, we never hesitated once. It was like, boom, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. You know? Right. Very cool. All right. So we have to do an official exit. Uh -huh. Some what? kind of goodbye. I don't, I don't know. He's not good at this. I'm not good at this. So, um, <laughs> uh, this has been Josh Hughes with, uh, domesticated animals. This, and this has been Cameron Curran <laughs> with awkward goodbyes. <laughs> have a good night, ladies and gentlemen. That's great. I'll take it. I'll take it.